not been a good week. <laughs> Last week wasn't a good week. I went down to the point. I was throwing shrimp. I was throwing. I, I tell you, this week I've thrown shrimp. I've thrown f live fiddler crabs. I've thrown live finger mullet, and uh, I've thrown f sand fleas, and nothing. I can't even get a pinfish to take the bait. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go shark fishing using the kingfish. Right, I got some. I'm gonna catch a shark. We're gonna smoke them on the grill. Make smoke shark fish dip. <laughs> Let's go. The first thing we need to think about before we go out shark fishing is being able to identify the type of shark that you catch. This is really important because if you keep the wrong type of shark, you can get in a lot of trouble. The thing is, it's really hard to identify sharks because they all sort of look the same. But there are a couple of key differences, and if you know these differences, you can identify shark. So we're going to look at a couple of things, one being the dorsal ridge, two, the placement of the dorsal fin, and three, the markings on the shark. So for example, let's start with a sandbar shark. If you catch a shark and it has no identifiable markings, look at the dorsal fin. If the dorsal fin is tall and wide, it may be a sandbar shark. And if you were to draw an imaginary line from that dorsal fin down to the pectoral fin, you would notice that the dorsal fin aligns mid-pectoral fin. That's a good indication this is a sandbar shark. Lastly, a sandbar shark is a ridgeback shark. That means it has an inner dorsal ridge. A dusky shark also has an inner dorsal ridge. Now we're not allowed to keep any sharks that have inner dorsal ridge or ridgeback sharks. So we're gonna let these go regardless. But just for identification purposes, if we look at the dorsal fin, we'll notice that it's smaller. More importantly, if we were to draw that imaginary line from the dorsal fin down to the pectoral fin, you can see the dorsal fin is actually further back on the shark and it aligns behind the pectoral fin. So that's basically your difference right there. A tall, wide dorsal fin, sandbar, with that dorsal fin aligning mid-pectoral fin. Smaller dorsal fin, with the dorsal fin aligning behind the pectoral fin, dusky shark. So that's two sharks we're going to take a look at. Next, we're going to look at the black tip shark and how it's different than a spinner shark. The next shark I want to talk about is a black tip. Now you can keep black tip sharks. I think they have to be 54 inches, but don't take my word for it. Check the regulations, make sure you don't get in trouble. Um, this is a non ridgeback shark. There is no interdorsal ridge. And you can tell a black tip shark because it will have these faded black markings on its fins. The one way you can make sure is if you look at the anal fin, it's white. It's not a black tip, which is strange because it's a black tip shark. The last shark I want to mention is a spinner shark. Now a spinner shark can easily be confused with a black tip shark because it has no interdorsal ridge and also it has faded black markings on it. The only way that you can tell the difference or the best way you can tell the difference is by looking at that anal fin. If you look at the anal fin, it will be black on a spinner shark. It will not be black on a black tip shark. I know this is very confusing and that's why it's important you study this stuff and you know how to identify sharks before you try to keep one. So there you go on the top, the black tip shark, and you can see the dorsal uh, fin does align in the middle of the pectoral, so more like a sandbar shark. And with the spinner shark, it's more behind it. Now, the anal fin is white on a black tip shark, but it is black on a spinner shark. And that's how you can tell the difference. Listen, I need to get some breakfast and then we'll talk more about sharks. Liver pudding. I think my wife bought this for the dog. I'm gonna fry some up and see what it. All right, I've never made this fish. before. Never made it, but I think I can figure it out. I had it in a restaurant here on the island a couple weeks ago. Not for breakfast. Maybe it was a couple months ago before the pandemic. I don't know. Uh, oh, I think you're supposed to slice it pretty thin. Threw some butter in there. I don't know if there's still, still butter in there or not. Let's do some butter in there. I guess that's what it's supposed to look like. But made two plates one for me, one for the dog. Let's see if it's not too hot. Mm, pretty good. Hmm. Bet you like that. Come here, dog. I'm making a mess. Is it good? Tail's wagon. Mm. I don't know. I think you're supposed to eat it with eggs or something. I'm just gonna try it. Tell you what I think. Mm mm. That's good stuff. What did I put in there? Liver. All right. Now I got all filled up. I can go fishing. There's a scene in the movie Jaws where 
Quint hears click, click, click on his reel, and he straps himself into the orca, and then he's just waiting for that moment, and then all of a sudden the shark just hits, boom, right there. And I knew the exact same thing was happening. I picked up that reel because I saw him like click, click, click. I just saw him just tapping on it, and I'm just, this thing's about to take this bait. I can just tell, and I was right, and so um, I picked it up. I started reeling it in, and he got to about the sandbar, and he decided to lay down, and I thought, oh, man, I probably have like a skate a stingray on the line or something like that and then I got him across the sandbar and I started just coming and reeling down and then pulling it up and reeling down and he came across that sandbar and he came up onto the beach um, and it was a shark it turned out it's an Atlantic sharp nose which I didn't show how to identify in the the first four sharks I showed but uh, it is a fish you can keep and I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna show you what I do to keep it and to cook it um, and I'll show you how you can identify an Atlantic sharp nose from other sharks and it's actually pretty simple it's probably one of the easiest ones besides the bonnet head to be identified if you look at the side of the shark and if I can get this guy to calm down and not bite me um, it has white spots on it and the, the Atlantic sharp nose has these white spots and you can see I'm going to point to them here with my finger there's one there there's a couple there and that's how you can tell it's an Atlantic sharp nose now sharks pee through their skin so you need to bleed them right away so sorry if this is a little gruesome probably put a little uh, disclaimer there that we were going to get graphic but um, I, I hit its head because I want it to take to sever the spinal cord actually I'm trying to kill it um, but I want it to bleed so I shook it in the water to get the blood out I wanted it to keep bleeding the heart to keep pumping the blood to keep coming out of it when I get it home the first thing I do is I cut off the fins and and the belly fat because the belly fat has a lot of mercury in it and I don't need any of that um, the next thing I do is I use two different knives. I have the serrated knife here, which I use to get the fins off and also to start um, filleting it to cut the skin because shark skin is really tough. And I'm telling you, I've got a sharp fillet knife. Now you can see I'm using the serrated knife here just to get it started. And then I'm going to pick up my fillet knife. My fillet knife is sharp. When I start this process, it's going to cut through it fairly nicely here. And then in a second, you're going to see when I flip over the other side, it's like it's not even going through. That skin will dull out your knife so fast as if you're rubbing it against sandpaper. But I will basically, once I get the fins off, fillet it like any other fish. Um, usually I'll cut the skin off too because again fish the shark pees through its skin so I don't really want that and then I've just got a nice piece of shark steak that I'm gonna take upstairs and I'm gonna and I'm gonna finish it filleting it up there now watch what I'm talking about here <laughs> I'm left-handed I gotta flip it over I'm starting even I think my serrated knife is getting dull it's I'm having trouble getting through the skin it's so tough once I get through that, I get that fillet knife. And look, you can tell it's totally, it's dulled out at this point. I can't even get through. It's not really cutting very well. I'm like having to saw it. It's ridiculous. Now, interesting enough, the shark ate the bait, the pinfish, and he had it in his mouth. And he had the hook in his mouth too, but the hook didn't actually get into his mouth. I think he was just holding, look at this, I open up the head and I pull it out and the hook's not actually in the mouth. I think he was just holding that fish and didn't want to let it go for whatever reason. It was in his mouth the whole time. Anyway, back up in the kitchen, I, I wash it down. I try to take off some of that bloodline and this piece here, I'm just going to fillet in, into chunks and I like to make shark bites. Now look at this, this is so creepy. His skin, now how long has this fish been dead? I caught him, I bled him down there, I took him up and I cleaned him in the backyard and now I got him up in the kitchen and his skin is still moving. It's that muscle memory, it was still moving. It was really creepy. So anyway, I put him in some plastic bag and put him in the fridge or <laughs> I don't want to deal with him anymore after that. The second half here, I'm gonna use for smoked fish dip. I've never smoked a shark, so this is gonna be the first time. I'll basically put it in overnight in a pan with salt, uh, kosher salt and use it nice and liberally too. And I'll put in some brown sugar and then I'm gonna throw it on the coals I'll show you how I smoke it. We're gonna throw some smoke on it. We're gonna smoke this shark. So let's get it going. Smoke chunks, starting to smoke. All right, let's get the uh, fish on. Fish on. <laughs> fish on. And cover. Check back in two hours. Smoke fish dip or that 70s show? There it is. Shark. Smoke shark. I'm going to put it in my bowl. I'll take it upstairs and make it into some interesting 
fish dip. So this is basically all the ingredients I used. I'm not going to show you how I made it here because I actually did a video. I'll put a link right above there to the right and you can click on that video if you want to see the recipe for my smoked fish dip. Right there. All I got is a potato chip. I'm going to give you a little bit. Oh no. Oh no. Now what do I do? Oh no. It's just not working. <laughs>